and the choices you make are very important. Where at first glance, because you see these dice, you might think that there's a lot of luck involved, but in fact, there's not. There's very, very little luck. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop, Unforgiven, the Lincoln Assassination Trial by Greenfeet Games. It plays two players, takes about an hour to play, and is for ages 10 to 13 and up. And in the game, you are playing as either the prosecution or the defense for Mary Surratt from 1865, a potential co-conspirator of the Lincoln assassination. Now, this was a huge controversial specific trial back then, and she did end up being found guilty and was hung by the neck. However, we're going to go ahead and revisit history and determine if that was the right thing or not based on whether you're playing as the prosecution or the defense. We'll go throughout three different trial phases in which you're going to be gathering cards and playing them down either in front of you or discarding them to gain tokens to utilize to persuade jurors. You want to get them on your side. And if you can do one of three different things, whether it be instantly a guilty or innocent conviction, conviction innocent or guilty, or whether it be convi convincing four jurors that she did or did not do it, or letting all three of the phases go through and gathering up TP points and seeing who has the most. Will what happened in the past happen in the future, or will you be able to change that depending on what role you play? Let's take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how it plays, and then we'll discuss what I think about the game. Welcome to the setup for Unforgiven, the Lincoln Assassination Trial, and this is everything included in the game. To set up the game, you're simply going to place the main board out, as well as shuffle all of the Phase 1, 2, and 3 trial decks. Go ahead and also deal out these 9 cards, shuffle them up and deal out 3 here, give 3 to one player and give 3 to the other, and then you'll be doing a draft in which 2 players are each going to get 2 at the end, and each of them are going to place 1 of them over here. You'll also be doing a draft for these die over here. You'll be pulling them from this bag, and one player will be drawing three, the other will be drawing two, rolling them, and then placing them in order until we get all five here. Take a die from the bag and roll it and place it on this locked space as well. Every player is going to get five of these sway tokens, which you'll be utilizing throughout the game, and you'll also be randomly taking three cards from the trial phase three deck and placing them in these slots here, just inserting them just like this. These will be used in the game. Go ahead and place the rest of the sway tokens somewhere where everybody can reach them. Give every single player a player reference card that has a, both a front and a back to it. And then do the second portion of the setup. Basically what you're going to be doing is taking the entire phase one trial deck, shuffling them up, and then dealing out five cards face up, four cards face down, three cards face up, two cards face down, and one card face up, forming this little grid here where you're basically going to be drawing from and taking actions with. And then go ahead and have one of the players start, maybe the last person to go to court. And look at your little card here. This is going to explain what you're going to do. To start the game off, you're going to first draft these die. And the way you're going to be doing it is using these sway tokens if need be. You can take the first one for you can take the first one for free, or if you want the second one, you'll place a sway token on this space here and take the next one. Or maybe you want the third one, you'll place another sway token. And you can go across all the way to get whatever die you want. And both players will end up getting a die. So maybe this player will just get this one, and this player will just get this one. Whenever you pull a die from here, go ahead and take a die out of the bag and roll the die and place it in the spot you took one from. After you've done that, then you're going to go ahead and start the game. You should have, each player should have two of these guys here. These are jurors. These are collected jurors that you have and two that they have collected as well. And you're going to go through any of the four different card, or the four different card actions in the game, or take apart any die, take any die actions in the game as well. There are four different card actions you can take, but the way it works is you select a face-up card that has no other card on top of it. And at the start of the game, there's only two to choose from, whether it be this one or that one. And in the game as well, you'll notice that all the cards are going to have symbols on the top and bottom. Any symbols on the bottom are going to be in reference to what it costs to buy the card or to utilize the card's abilities, and any on the top are going to be associated with putting in front of you and gaining that specific benefit for the rest of the game. 
So you're going to want these cards and you're going to want to keep them in front of you if you can use their abilities in any way. The first thing you can do is draft a trial card, which is pretty simple. You can take the card, pay the cost, and in this case it's three sway, and place it in front of you. And then for the rest of the game, you'll have the benefit of that card on the top portion to use as a symbol. And that's very good. That's going to be very helpful because certain cards in the game are going to cost certain symbols like this gun here or like this ear here. And after you've placed it in front of you, your turn is over, provided you didn't want to do any of the die actions. There are a ton of different die actions, most of which are either going to have you moving up and down this track here, giving you TP points or victory points at the end of the game, using wilds as some type of benefit, or spending these die here in order to allow you to either gain more sway or to be able to do something like an objection or take an extra turn. And of course, the main thing that you'll be using them for, which are basically going to be currency, like spending this eye. If any of these cards here, like this one here, costs an eye, you could take this, put it back into the bag, and then take that card and put it in front of you, just like you would use sway tokens. And of course, let's talk about some of the other actions now. The next action is going to be discarding a trial card. When you discard it, so for instance, I took this card here, you'll flip over the cards that are now on top. So you'll always flip them over whenever they're on top. And if you want, so this player here could discard this card, put it into the discard pile, and simply gaining to sway. Another action that you could do is you can persuade an open juror. You'll be discarding the selected trial card. And then you're going to pay. So in this case here, if I wanted to move this guy here, if I had these two, so I got one one head right here. If this one here also was a head, which may or may not be on this on this die here, but if they were, I could spend this die, have this head, and I can move this guy up. Moving these guys up will eventually grant the, you the ability to own them. And of course, if you have four of them, you're going to win the game. And some of them are going to have all of them will have unique benefits as well when you bring them over to your side. And there are the three different types, whether it be uh, trying to go for their morality or logic or patriotism, that kind of thing, and you can move them back and forth and sway them. And then you can also attempt to convince an available juror. So you'll have these cards in your hand available to just you, and you can simply pay the cost at the bottom and convince them. You'll turn them to the side, just like you would if you brought these guys off of the board, and you'll gain the benefit as well. And they'll have their own unique benefits that they will provide to you when you place them next to you. Another thing to note is, in general, you'll be spending the cost and discarding a card to move these guys closer to you. But let's say you didn't want to pay the cost or couldn't, you could pay one of these these costs instead and when you pay for them they'll go away and that will allow them to move closer to you so utilize these at your own discretion and those are pretty much it that's pretty much what you're gonna be doing throughout the game you'll go throughout drawing all of these cards here for the phase one trial putting them in front of you whenever you have cards that are gonna give you a benefit whether they be for the end of the game or they be for throughout the game which will give you certain symbols which will unlock other new cards that are gonna be of course more challenging as the game goes on when this entire set of cards here runs out you'll take out the trial phase two deck and you'll do the exact same thing you'll have five four three two and one and you have three cards remaining everybody will then go ahead and draft die from this little area here and go back and forth and the player who actually was on this track who was the furthest along on this track will go second and the person who's the farthest away will go first and then you'll do the final trial phase which will be three now of course there won't be the three extra cards because they're here but you'll do the exact same thing draft and then go ahead and play your card actions and any die actions that you want to play or can play Another thing to note, other than the fact that just if this goes over here or over here, she will be found guilty or innocent and one player will instantly win. But also, when this moves to the four track, this will become available to the player who pushed it there, as well as the die, which will be given to that player, and then a new die is going to be pulled out and rolled. So you'll be actually unlocking additional jurors in this way. And if it goes back to the zero position, that person will gather the die, and then of course if it goes to the four position, the die and the card will be given to the defense. And so you're going to be gathering these guys as well to utilize if you don't want to push or cannot push these guys based on what you have in front of you. And that's pretty much it as far as this track goes, but it's actually rather important and that's pretty much the idea of the game in order to win like i said you need to convince four jurors basically have them join your side turn them over and of course use their ability and if you get four of them you win the game another way to win the game before it even ends technically you can move this to either the guilty side which means the prosecution wins or to the innocent side which means that the defense wins and the final way you win 
is the Tableau management style in which you go through all the different trial phases of the game and you'll look and see how many of these hammers you've got here. These are basically the victory points, the TP points, and you're going to add up all the ways that you're going to be scoring points like this one here. For every die you have extra, you'll get two points. If you happen to have this guy here, he's going to score you a certain amount of points and so on and so forth. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game in that way will win. Three different ways to win, all completely different, and you'll be utilizing different strategies in order to win so for instance this die here if you spend it you'll be able to move this on this track here or of course just purchasing these guys here or and pushing them along on the track or from your hand will allow you to get those guys and then the final way is of course building your tableau will the prosecution find her to be guilty of the crime or will the defense find her to be innocent let's find out in unforgiven the lincoln assassination trial let's talk about the review now the first thing to say about this game is it has a lot of historical relevance. You are going back in time and you are learning about the trial of the Lincoln assassination and understanding a little bit about it. In fact, it made me go back and learn a little bit about it as well because I got really interested in that. So this has that genre, that feel to the trial. Now you're basically in this game attempting to do one of three things. Convince four jurors, push that reasonable doubt tracker either to guilty or innocent, or end the game and score TP and whoever has the most is going to be the winner. But all three of them provide different advantages and disadvantages and if you go too far in one way it might be hard to come back. This is a two player game which means it's going to be extremely competitive and the choices you make are very important. Where at first glance because you see these dice you might think that there's a lot of luck involved but in fact there's not there's very very little luck and what i found very interesting as well is going through and deducting where and what i wanted to do made a huge difference as i moved throughout the game and progressed me along the tracks that i wanted to go through now i didn't go through the reasonable drought doubt track where my wife did and she ended up pushing it all the way along and stomping me because she got me even before the third round on the first game and that just goes to show that there's many different victory routes had the game actually ended and the reasonable that tracker didn't go and hit the guilty verdict I would have actually had tons of points more than her and been able to win the game but that's why the victory condition exists and of course on the other hand convincing the jurors is also important as well and being careful of what you allow people to take based on what's available to you in that secondary area of where all the cards are set up is important each of the cards is lined out as like evidence or newspaper headlines or the unique witnesses or character references and you're going to be able to choose and pick between them and how you choose them will determine what you're going for in the game. Gathering those nooses is going to push that reasonable doubt tracker up or down and you can see what your opponent is doing. I made a small mistake at the beginning of the game where after drawing these guys and or after dealing these guys out and kind of drafting them, I hid them and so did she and I didn't realize that she actually had the specific reasonable doubt guy and he, she pushed it along. So remember that there's no uh, hidden information in the game to my knowledge, at least as to the core recording of this video. And that's pretty cool. I like that because I know what they can do and what I need to do in order to prevent it. And if I do not prevent it, it's going to cost me. The quality of the game is beautiful. All the pieces are very, very high quality, nice and thick cardboard pieces. The cards are very nice as well. They're very, very shiny and also nice and thick too. It's very, very nicely done. The sway tokens are nice as well. And you do feel like you're pushing things along. You are either trying to pull or convince jurors and attempting to find the innocence of Mary or the guilt of her and attempting to complete one of the three. Uh, Callie seemed to think that the game was a little less on the side of understanding the trial of her as much like she was more focused on just attempting to achieve the victory and then go into the, the depths of seeing all different cards and the fact that they have a ton of different types of flavor texts and whatnot so I guess it'll be up to you to decide whether or not that's true for me I definitely felt like it was a ju jury court case trial game where I was pushing and moving things along and I was attempting to get the trial to go all the way to the end allowing me to show off all of my points as opposed to just pushing that one track along but I guess it experience is going to differ but I personally very very much enjoyed this game I also really really liked all the artwork to the game it feels great for the time it shows all the different pieces of artwork and all of our history I am a big fan of that kind of stuff and this does an excellent job of that as a two-player game it's also very nicely competitive and you do feel that competition that sway of back and forth and you have to watch what your opponent is doing and if you don't you're going to lose this game you need to be aware of what 
what they want to do, what they want to gather. And sometimes you should not pick the card you want and you need to pick the card that they want. Because if you don't pick the card they want, they're going to beat you. And it's going to be something that you're not going to see coming either. Another thing to note too in the game is on the player reference sheet, it does tell you the four different actions for card actions and all the die actions. But what it doesn't say about some of the die actions is one, you can spend three sway in order to move, uh, in order to take a die action again. Because generally speaking, whenever you want to gather a die, it's going to be at the beginning of a phase. So trial phase one, you and your opponent are going to gather a die and spend sway to get the one that you want. And that'll happen every phase. But another way, other than just simply cards or jurors, that will also grant you die on the occasion, you can spend three sway in order to go ahead and do that track again. It will still possibly cost you even more sway if you want a very specific type of die, but it's not on the card near it. I think it definitely should be. As well as you can spend one sway to re-roll a die and that will allow you to gather certain things uh that will allow you to get some certain different types of symbols that you can gather cards with which i think is also important to make sure that those are added on the card because it's just something to that people can forget about and i was playing through the game the first like couple turns the first game i played and i'm like oh this seems weird that i can't gather these dice and that's because you can, so makes sense, right? Each of the different trial phases presents more complexities and requirements, and what you have in your tableau will definitely define what you can get, and whether or not you're going for either more additional cards there, or whether you're going for the jurors that are in front of you is also going to be very important. Keep track of what jurors your opponent has as well, and if they can get the specific ones on the uh, guilty or innocence track, you should also be aware of that as well, because because those things can come out of nowhere if you're not paying attention. This game is an excellent game. This is going to get my seal of approval. I really, really enjoyed this game. I thought all of the mechanics are very, very well put together, the different variations of victory points. It's a two-player game, however, and I'm not generally the biggest two-player fan, but in this case, I had a ton of fun. I was always constantly thinking strategy, thinking about my opponent, thinking about what I wanted to do, and what my best laid plans were going to amount to except for the fact that I wasn't prepared to think about my opponent and it cost me and it cost me quite a few times. But knowing that going back into it, learning from my mistakes and playing again, this game rewards that type of behavior and learning how to pick what cards and when to pick them is going to be so important in this game. Unforgiven, an excellent game. I strongly suggest you take a look at this nice little piece of American history and decide for yourself whether you want to pick it up or not. All right, guys, thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. And make sure that you go ahead and hit that bell notification button. It greatly helps us. Of all the Green Feet games, this is probably my favorite game of the bunch because it is so well put together and the mechanics work so well. And they're just, I don't know, just something about this game is great, including just the history of it all. Check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Join Callie's last giveaway before it's too late for family games you can pick up and win and also her Callie's Corner videos they're currently up we had one yesterday I believe also go ahead and check out our live stream every Wednesday 6 30 p.m. PST where you can go ahead and see us play games just like this one and enjoy yourself as much as we are with our community where we give away games on the stream and our discord as well links in the description go ahead and join us we do auctions and all kinds of fun stuff all right guys that's all I got for this time and as always I look forward to traveling back into the past with you next time.